Welcome to this session on fatigue and mechanical properties of metals. Most wind turbine components are made of metals, with the exception for the blades. In this session we will focus on basic mechanical properties of metals and with a special focus on fatigue, since uh, this is a major concern for wind turbine components. So let's start at looking at the basic uh, equations for stress and strain where we consider here a metallic rod, which has the uh, length L0 and the cross-section area A0. If we apply a force to this rod, if we pull it, then the, uh, the rod it will become longer and thinner. The engineering stress is calculated uh, by dividing the force with the original cross-section area, while the engineering strain is calculated by dividing the increase in length with the original length. Now let's look at the stress-strain curve, where we have a uh, straight line here in the beginning. Uh, so there is a linear relationship between the stress and the strain, and this is known as Hooke's law. Uh, where E here, this is the modulus of elasticity, also known as Young modulus, and this corresponds to the stiffness of the material. So the stiffness is basically the slope of this line here. Uh, the stiffness is related to uh, how strong the atomic bonds are. And this is also related to the melting point. Uh, so all iron-based alloys, they will have roughly the same stiffness, while all aluminium-based alloys, they will have roughly the same stiffness. Uh, if you want to change the stiffness, you need a major uh, change in chemical composition. Metals, they consist of metallic atoms. Uh, that are fixed in a uh, crystal lattice. And if we apply a low stress to this, uh, this lattice, then we will stretch it. And if we relax the stress, then we will, uh, the lattice will revert to its original shape. And we call this uh, elastic deformation, which is non-permanent. If we increase the stress, then we will reach a certain point called the yield stress. And here we will actually break the atomic bonds. So this is called elastic deformation and this is permanent. So if we relax uh, our lattice here, then we will not go back to the original shape. We will have a new lattice shape. Uh, so we have permanently, permanently deformed our material. So looking at the stress strain curve again, we started out with the, the stiffness, the slope of the curve here. Then we get the yield stress point where we go to plastic deformation. And at the top of the curve, we have uh, the tensile strength. And this is basically the ultimate strength of the material. And we can see here that the slope goes down again. And uh, this is because uh, for uh, most metals, uh, we can get uh, some local deformation and the metallic rod here. And since our engineering stress, it was based on the original cross-sectional area, then the stress will drop. So finally here, we get a fracture. And here we can see what the ductility of our material is. So the, the three points here, the, the yield stress, the tensile strength, and uh, the ductility, they are dependent on the chemical composition of the metal and the thermal and mechanical treatment of the metal. When metallic components they are exposed to a cyclic stress, they may fail from what is called fatigue. And these stresses, they can be quite low. And the important factors for fatigue here, these are uh, the number of cycles and the stress amplitude. So the stress amplitude is the difference between maximum and minimum stress. Uh, these curves here, they can be quite erratic. They don't need to be a, like a perfect curve. So here we have uh, SN curves, and uh, these indicate when a material will fail as a function of the stress amplitude and the number of cycles. So, for example, if we have a lower stress amplitude, it will take uh, a larger number of cycles until the component fails. Uh, different uh, materials, they have different uh, curves, and also different steels, they also have different curves. But common for the steels is that they have a minimum threshold level. So that is, if the stress amplitude is below a certain point, then a steel component will not fail from fatigue. So this is in contrast with, for example, aluminium. Uh, here, 
uh, if aluminium is exposed for, uh, to uh, cyclic stresses, then it will fail from fatigue sooner or later. So when a component is exposed to cyclic stresses, then we will initiate a crack, or we may initiate a crack, and this will typically happen uh, at an unfortunate geometry or a, at a defect, such as uh, inclusions or a scratch in the surface. Uh, wind turbine components, they have uh, many unfortunate geometries, and here are two examples where we have a uh, gear, where we have uh, a unfortunate geometry between the gear teats, and here is also a bolt where uh, the inside of the, the thread is uh, quite unfortunate. When we have initiated uh, a crack, then it will start to grow, and it will grow with each cycle when the stress is at its maximum. So each time the crack it grows, uh, it will leave a mark, uh, like a ring here. And this uh, will be visible in a microscope, and it may also be visible with a naked eye. Eventually, uh, the component will fail, where we will have a, a final uh, fracture surface. This may be quite large, or it can also be small. So the fatigue crack can uh, sometimes grow almost all the way through the component before it fails. Uh, so this uh, final fracture surface, it is usually quite rough compared to the surface of the fatigue crack, which is quite smooth. So here we have uh, an example of, uh, this is a gear, from a, a, this is from a wind turbine gearbox. We can see it's, it's quite large, uh, this is the cross section of it, and if you look at the if you look at the fracture surface here, we can see that there are some ring marks here, and these are from fatigue, and when the crack has grown. And we can also see here where the crack has initiated, we just follow the marks, and we can see it's in between uh, two gear teats. And the fracture, uh, the final fracture area, uh, is also quite small in this case here. And we can see that it is at an angle with the uh, fatigue crack. So in this example here, we have a uh, bolt. So this is uh, from a wind turbine foundation. And again, here we can see uh, clear marks that indicate a fatigue uh, mode failure. So in this case, we can see that we, uh, we have several cracks that have initiated down here at the bottom. And then they have grown into one large crack where we have the normal fatigue mode. The crack grows upwards. And the final fracture area is also here uh, quite small. And in this case here, we can also see that we have a lot of corrosion down here. This also indicates where the crack has started, uh, since uh, the crack initiation point is the most exposed area to the elements. So this concludes uh, our session. And uh, you should here have learned about some basic mechanical properties of metals and fatigue.